Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're doing another Einstein Analytics video. Two really cool things happened today. First, uh, we got our first snowfall in Buffalo, New York, and a wonderful sharp wind rose right up my back to remind me just how much I hate this weather. Next off, Salesforce released Spring 18 to pre-release GS0 orgs. So pretty cool stuff. We're going to be uh, diving into the spoilers here. Let's get started by taking a look at uh, our new icon for this season. It's going to be Cody watering a bonsai, which is deliciously ironic to me because, um, you know, Cody will be much like my lady friend spending the winter uh, doing indoor gardening while looking forward to spring. So uh, let's jump right in and get to the spoiler. So the lens editor got some updates. Uh, a lot of them are organizational and aesthetic. Um, others are really fundamentally net new. Uh, so we're going to try to go through them in order of simplicity. First, the dataset fields button has been moved now. Um, this is the same functionality. Don't We don't really see any updates since uh, winter 18. Not to say it's not super cool. Uh, we just have a different place to get to it from. Uh, another thing that we have is that on bar charts, we have renamed our measures and our groupings to our horizontal and vertical axis, respectively. I'm assuming this is going to behave a little bit differently from visualization to visualization, but I haven't messed with it a whole lot yet. Click here to add measures and uh, click here to add dimensions. You also already got uh, your, your trellis options here, which previously we would have to wait until we actually uh, committed this to the dashboard um, to make those updates. Uh, we also have additional fields. This is going to give you, um, you know, like uh, different uh, additional measures that you can um, add to that. Uh, we also see over here, uh, this is now where we've got our suggested charts feature. Um, my chart is boring because it has no grouping and it only has one measure, so we see some gauges. But we did see the addition of this feature in Winter 18, and we're seeing it just relocated. Uh, similarly, all of our chart formatting options are now going to be uh, on this gear on the right, which I feel is a little bit more intuitive and easier to follow. Uh, we also have our history uh, views right here, so if I actually did want to make a change, um, you know, I could now see that, that as I make these changes, the different moments in time that I have are, are there. And believe it or not, this is not a new feature. This feature has been around since, like, man, as, lo as long as I've been using Wave, like, Classic Designer had it. Um, you know, we've had these back and forward buttons. Um, but just to, to have it right here on this handy little clock, I think this is the first time I've actually thought about what an awesome feature that is in, in at least a year. And uh, I really should use it more. But um, I'm just fussy, and I, I click through visualizations until I, I see something that, that, that's groovy and works for me. So let's get into some of the brand new stuff. One thing we've never had before is this gear button up here. Normally, I would want to see more than one option on a gear, but when I saw what that option was, I was more than satisfied. Set limit. This is a feature that has long been requested to be added to the UI, and while there are really good reasons for why it never has been here before, I'm not going to cover them at all in this video. The important thing is we now can set a limit through the UI. So I'm going to hit 5. I'm going to sort by that dimension. There's my top 5. This is one of the most basic things that we just couldn't do without code before. So before I show you this next gem, we're going to hop over into the analytics settings and take a look at this. Enable conversational exploration beta. Allows users to quickly ask data questions in non-technical language and view answers in automatically configured, easy to read charts. So uh, that's where you click up in this guy and you ask Einstein questions about your data. And uh, so far, all attempts I've made to do this have failed, uh, most likely because this went live a couple of hours ago in the pre-release org. This is still in a very, very primitive beta state. Uh, so I will be showing this in a later video once I figure out how to make it actually work without throwing an error. But uh, very excited to see this. I believe this is a result of the original MetaMind product uh, surfacing in wave but the last time I made a boast like that I ended up making a retraction so instead I'm just gonna say it's a cool new feature and I'm looking forward to exploring it so now let's talk about some of the new visualization types that are available to us um, you'll notice that there are definitely a few extra options than there used to be uh, but let's look at some updates that we got to an old favorite the geo map uh, one thing to call out here is now if you attempt to select a visualization type that you don't have the right number of groupings and measures for, it's going to call out what you're doing wrong. Uh, this is a really, really nice enhancement. So let's try to give it what it wants. Three to four measures. Okay, so 
I need one that's going to be sum of latitude, one that's going to be sum of longitude, one that's going to determine the bubble size. So once I fix the group and the limit, we've actually got some nice looking data here. I do want to call out this gradient effect that we're seeing on the bubbles is very nice. Um, we also now have the ability to control the bubble color, but this is only through a measure and not a dimension. So for example, if I was to choose longitude, I would expect that bubbles would get darker as we move from left to right, and they do. Uh, we can't preserve that gradient effect, but this is still nice uh, new functionality that we did not have previously. Um, I was really hoping to see this on dimension, and there's a good reason for that. So in my hobby project of building the game Risk in Salesforce, uh, I did recently uh, go and make a custom GeoJSON. Uh, this was inspired by uh, Tyler, whose last name I will not attempt to pronounce, over at Salesforce. Recently, uh, he did an analytics campfire session on custom GeoJSON. This has always been something that's really fascinated me and I just never got around to it. And if you watch that uh, video, you'll see just how easy it really is. And if you look at this map closely, you'll see the parts that I did first where I was like super diligent and paying attention and the parts I did last where I was just like, let's make jagged lines and get it done with. Um, this is also using kind of a UI hack. It's totally not best practices, so I'm not going to reveal how I got the different colors to display. But this is not out of the box functionality. Uh, but I do get this nice trippy effect when uh, we shift between colors um, or shift between different continental views. Um, nice echo effect there. So this is a uh, Winter 18 Geo map that shows the same information. So basically I picked GPS locations for all the different territories. Um, I've also got an as tokens view and you know we can show territory labels. So now we're going to clip that to the dashboard and take a look at some of the new tooltip functionality that we have. If we scroll down here, we now have the ability to add custom text to our tooltips. We can either choose from text stored on a field, which is pretty cool. We can do all sorts of fun stuff with formulas and compute expression in the data flow. Or we can just write, this is my tooltip. And then when we view that and go over here, we see this is my tooltip. Another thing we can do is now add markers. So if we scroll down, we go to chart markers, and go to edit chart markers, and we can click somewhere random on our chart where there somewhere random where there is data. And we can choose to add a marker. Uh, this blink when closed, I don't really uh, don't really see anything different going on with that. Open by default, that's whether or not we're seeing it. But we can add custom text again, we can choose from a field or we can say marker number one and now it pops up right there from preview we do have the ability to X that out again we were able to choose whether or not we wanted to expand it by default but if I click on it that's what I get let's, look, let's add a new marker see if we can pick different colors so it looks like maybe for you know different ones we can pick different colors so pretty cool I got my blue marker, I got my purple marker. This has been a feature that's long uh, requested. Users often want to be able to identify in timeline charts when significant business events occurred, but they may not necessarily appear based on the filtration of your data. So kind of excited to see what we can do with this. So to show off the last feature that I have for tonight, um, I've added this list widget on the side here. This allows me to filter by a specific player and see where their area of influence is. So for example, purple, they're mostly over here. Uh, green, they're down here. I like that the markers only show up when they're selected. That's a really, really, really nice add. So what if I was the red player? Um, and I always wanted to log in and see my red player view. Well, now I have the ability to save uh, a pre-selected filter and come back to uh, that view. So this is my uh, red control view. I've currently got the red player selected. And my default view is actually set to all. Uh, if I wanted to manage my views, um, I can see the different ones that I have. I can edit their labels or, or kill them or make them default. So that's all I have for tonight on Spring 18 sneak peek coverage, but stay tuned for more videos on this topic. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. I'm always open to new ideas. And as always, thanks for watching.